Okay. <clears throat> so you can go ahead and title this page. So again, we're writing this in our journal. The reason we're going to take notes in our journal for this topic is just because it's something that you guys are going to get to use for all of your labs, right? So it's, it's useful information for exactly what this journal is for, which is your labs, all right? And technically, the very next lab that we're about to do is going to be a little bit more on the calculation heavy side. It's not a difficult calculation, but um, this way we can follow these. All right, so um, significant figures, just like we saw in the video. These significant figures basically show the precision of measurement, all right? They show the precision of measurement. So we will um, go over those couple of vocab words, accuracy and precision, okay? In just a few, okay? But that's the whole point of this, all right? So when we were looking at those rulers and on Friday, uh, we're looking at the precision of these instruments, and every device out there has a different precision that they measure to. Okay, so the first one, the first rule to decide whether something is a significant figure or not is all non-zero digits count. As in, if it's a non-zero digit, a non-zero value, that is a significant figure. So for example, if I have 4.23, 4.23, how many significant figures are on that? Hmm? Should be three. Okay, so this has three significant figures. 4.23 has three significant figures, okay? All right, our next rule was sandwich zeros count, all right? So sandwich zeros count. I guess I should have put the word count. There we go, okay? As in, if it's um, within two non-zero digits, all right, then it matters, and it, it's a significant digit. So we, we include that in our list. And you'll see why that's important here soon. It's kind of like you're kind of like, why do we care? And trust me, there's a reason we care. So looking at this, we have 4.204. That zero is a sandwich zero, which means it does count. So looking at that, how many of those digits are significant? The answer is four. Yeah, exactly. All right. Hey, another thing while we're writing these, if I'm going way too fast, I will let you snap a picture and that way you'll have it, okay? So I'd rather you get what you need to get from this, okay? Nina Fogel. Okay, we'll do. Mm -hmm. Jimmy. All right, so number three, leading zeros. That means the first, like if they're first listed. Okay, they do not count. Leading zeros do not count. Okay, so the example I have is something like 0 0.204. Okay, 0 0.204. So looking at that number, okay, basically since this zero is in the front, that one does not count towards how many significant figures we have. So instead of saying four on this one, we're going to say three. This one only has three significant figures, okay? If I wanted to really get crazy and say 0 0.024, this one only has two significant figures. So it doesn't even matter that it's behind that decimal place. It doesn't count. And the reason why is because of, if you know what scientific notation is, that's usually when you see like something um, five times ten to the third power, something like that, that is scientific notation and it kind of takes care of these leading zeros because we would just remove them and put a times 10 to the negative something. But don't worry about that because we're going to get to that a little bit more um, when we get to the electromagnetic spectrum. All right, <clears throat> so leading zeros do not count. Okay, the last one is probably the toughest. Um, trailing zeros sometimes count, <laughs> all right? And the rule is they count as long as there's a decimal. So as soon as we put a decimal in that number, we're really talking about that precision that that um, 
device is able to measure to. And so if there's a decimal place, that will count, the zeros do, all right? So I have these three examples, technically four, but we'll, we'll look at that in a second. So I'm gonna give you a second to finish writing. So trailing or the end zeros count with a decimal. So our first example, 3,200, 3,200, no decimal place at the end. That means neither of these zeros count towards being a significant figure, okay? So there's only two on this. So that decimal at the end, you're gonna see matters, all right? When you guys are reporting your numbers in your labs, it matters whether you put a decimal or not, all right? So two significant figures on this one. Here, I put the decimal at the end. So now they all count. This is four significant figures. Okay. And then I took it one step further and put a point zero because that's usually that's usually the precision you guys are going to be going to is that decimal and then something, all right, or two somethings or whatever. Okay. Here, all of these count because those are trailing zeros and there's definitely a decimal. So this one has five significant figures. And then I included this one earlier today, so I don't mind if you, if you want to write it, you can. But just to make a point that leading zero did not count, but this trailing one did, so therefore this is two significant figures. Okay. Okay. So we are going to take a quick um, four minute break. No, not four minutes. Sorry. Three minute break. I'm going to hand this out right now. Okay. When you get your paper, you're taking a look at the side that says significant figures. It's asking you to determine the number of significant figures in those numbers. All right. So we'll take a three minute little, give it a practice. Um, try your best, and if you have any questions, that's an okay time to definitely ask, okay? There we go. Okay, so <clears throat> when we are calculating um, the significant figures, okay, so I'll go ahead and zoom in on this. So we'll focus on multiplying and dividing first. So when we're multiplying and dividing, okay, when you're multiplying and dividing, you, your answer should have the same number of significant figures, SFs, okay, as the number with the fewest. So it, not just are you plugging into your calculator to do the multiplication or division, you have to look at your numbers to begin with to see how many significant figures are offered to you, right? Because you can only report your answer using the least number of significant figures. Okay. Again, there's that there's that thing which is you're only as precise as your least precise device. Okay. So the example that I put up here, I went ahead and put um, 53. Looks like that part. There you go. 53.0 times 62. Okay. 53.0 times 62. So. If I pull out my calculator, which is over there, okay, so on the calculator I'm getting 3,286, so I'm going to write that out, 3,286, okay, when I am trying to figure out what the actual answer is that I'm going to report, though, I need to go back and look at these, right? So since it's multiplication division, we're counting up significant figures. So how many are in 53.0? Three. Three. How many are in 62? Two. two. So the smaller number is two. So my answer can only have two significant figures. Okay, so we're going to count one, two. We're paying attention to that one, checking the one behind it, okay? 
And that tells us that we end up with the answer, oh, I obviously wrote smaller than earlier, sorry. Um, 3,000, I'm having pen issues today, I'm so sorry. 3,300. And I'm not gonna include a decimal. If I include a decimal, then it's not a correct answer anymore. Okay. All right. Any questions on that one? If not, let's look at the addition and subtraction. When we are adding or subtracting, your answer will have the same number of decimal places as the one with the fewest. Okay, so adding and subtracting, our answer will have the same number of decimal places as the one with the fewest or the least. <clears throat> okay. So the answer or the example that I put was 15.3 plus 15.701. So when I add those together, I don't know why I would plug this in, but I am. That's okay. So when we add those together, we get 31.001, okay? However, since we're adding and they have different numbers of decimal places, we gotta figure that part out. So how many decimal places does this first one have? One. one. How many does the second number have? No. Nope. One, two, three. Okay, so which one am I stuck with? The one. All right. So because this has one decimal place, that one has three, we have to stick with one, which means I'm going to go to the first decimal place, check the little one behind it. It ends up being 31.0 as your final answer. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to take four minutes to, four-ish minutes, um, so you're going to go back to your little practice page that you guys were just looking at, okay? We're going to look underneath. Now you have questions about um, basically little calculations, right? So my mistake, <laughs> they kind of all are chunked together, so looking at this right away, you see that numbers 1 through 5 are addition and subtraction. So who, what are we going to be paying attention to on 1 through 5? Decimal places. Okay, so it might help to just automatically look at that first. Look at your decimal places. Figure out what is your answer going to be reported in, right? So, for example, on the first one, I would say, oh, that one has 3. This one has 1. This one has 2. This one has 1, right? So I'm limited to one decimal place when I go to make my answer. Might help to do that, okay? When you look at six through nine, now we're looking at significant figures. So I would do the same thing, right? So this one has three, this one has two. I'm stuck with two significant figures, and then I can calculate it. That's my recommendation, okay? So I'm gonna give about three, four minutes, try out some of those, and then we'll write one last thing about accuracy and precision, okay? Okay, so our next topic is talking about accuracy and precision, and the best way that it, for us to kind of explain it is just using something familiar like a bullseye. So a bullseye, if you've ever done bow and arrow or gone to a gun range or play darts and stuff like that. You know what a bullseye is. And so if you don't know what it is, uh, your your goal always with the bullseye is to hit that center spot, right? Um, and so we're going to use that to kind of distinguish what precision versus accuracy is. Because honestly, accuracy and precision or accurate and precise are things that I would say in common language, everybody uses them almost synonymously. And it's not technically right. I'm, I'm guilty of it too. So don't worry about it if it's you. All right, but um, so we're just going to kind of tweak our language just a little bit with that. Um, so I wanted to show you images before I just flat out give you definitions. 
So for example, if I hit everything is hitting that bullseye right in the center, right? That is something that I would define as accurate. Accurate, all right? I'm hitting where I'm, what I'm aiming for, and I hit it with all of them, okay? So that is accurate and precise, all right? So accuracy, and then the fact that all of them hit that center part is the precise part, all right? So keep that in mind, all right? Next one, and this happens, I know this is, I've experienced this at like a gun range and things like that, right? And so basically if you have something and you're shooting and you're aiming for that bullseye, but you keep hitting to the right, you just keep hitting to the right no matter what, all right? I would say that's still okay because you can compensate for that, right? Like you can always bring it back, you can kind of, you know, go a little to the left and maybe then it'll hit the bullseye and stuff like that. So. When all of your stuff is hitting the same spot, that's also a good thing. Is that accurate anymore? No, right? Because we're not hitting the bullseye, but it is precise. All right? So this is not accurate, but it is precise. Okay? This one, this would be like no bueno. <laughs> this is not good. All right? So this is not precise, nor is it accurate. Now you guys, especially this year for your first year of chemistry, um, we kind of hold you accountable for being precise, right? Accuracy, it comes with time, and honestly, we're in a high school lab, and so um, you might miss the mark quite a bit, all right? But I do expect you guys to be precise. So what, can you guys think of another word for precise? Consistent, consistency, okay? So consistent, and that is gonna be what we're gonna write down. So, in our journals, let's go ahead and jot down a couple of these definitions. So, for accuracy and precision, okay, and again, if this is going too fast, I can get you a copy of this, all right? Accuracy, this is closeness of a measurement to an accepted value, all right? So, how close am I to hitting the bullseye? How close am I to hitting what I wanted to hit? I sketched myself a little picture of the bullseye, so if that makes more sense to you, you're more than welcome to... Jot down that, all right, to help you remember it. Unfortunately, we're not only going to be looking at bullseyes, we're going to be looking at data, okay? So we got to know how to recognize that. Um, I did put a little note here that accepted values are the same thing as an actual or a theoretical, but we're going to write that again here in a second anyway, so if you don't write those two, that, that's okay, all right? But it's to an accepted value. Precision, <laughs> that honker of a word. Um, so reprodu reproducibility, I'm, I don't know if I made that one up, I'm not sure, but it's consistency, okay? Consistency is perfectly fine, all right? So kind of crazy because you're thinking, all right, but you just got done saying that precision on devices talks about, you know, how many lines do you have? Well, if you have more lines, then your data is more consistent, right? You have more of the people were getting that same measurement when you had more lines to match it up to, less guesstimating, right? So that's where that kind of comes from, okay? That's that connection. Um, <clears throat> so my picture on that one is just the bullseye again, but I have them off to the right, okay? So again, that's not a bad thing, okay? We should always aim for bullseye, but as long as we're consistent, that's a good thing. All right, so accuracy and precision. So we're gonna be looking at data, seeing what those end up being. I am gonna have you guys jot down notes as well about percent error. So this is the calculation that you guys have had the luxury of getting to calculate a couple times now, okay? But it is probably the one that I've had the most fun grading because <laughs> it, uh, some of us just do um, lots of different things. So um, so let's just establish what it is, okay? First, I'm getting rid of the idea of the negative. Don't worry about that negative, okay? Which then also takes care of, is it accepted minus experimental or is it experimental minus accepted? It doesn't matter because all I wanna know is what's the difference between those two numbers, all right? So you're subtracting those two numbers and if you notice, I went ahead and put these two straight lines on the sides. Anybody know what those are? Absolute values, absolute value. What that means, if it comes out negative, chop off the negative. We're only considering the magnitude, which is the number value, okay? So you're gonna subtract them, that's your first step. Then you're gonna divide by the accepted value. So the big thing that 
I would say you have to remember is that accepted shows up twice, not experimental. That last step is then multiplying it by 100, and uh, that changes it into a percent. So I did put that reminder. Accepted is the same thing as actual, which is theoretical. You can see it written three different ways, OK? Um, and then experimental is you. It's your data, all right? Accepted usually comes from a periodic table or calculations from the periodic table. Experimental stuff comes from you ran a lab, you got to see that data, you measured it, okay? Or calculations based off of your measurement kind of thing, okay? So I know that was a lot of information. Yeah, great job. Um, what we're going to follow up with for the remainder is you now have, so I'll, I'll move this in just a second. I just want to show you, okay? We're going to now look at the right-hand side of your page where you have this. This one is practicing accuracy precision. So this is your accepted value up here. And then one, two, and three are you trying out that percent error calculation. And once again, we are chopping off the negatives. We are doing absolute values, all right? And there's answers there for you. Yay! Um, OK, so that's going to be what we're going to do. And then this page will go into your journal, and it'll, we'll continue to practice it tomorrow, because um, there's one other thing we've got over. But we're not going to do that today, OK? So go ahead.